My family and I love the show. Question, will more coaches start leaving college football with the way everything is becoming? Notice the hashtags, Pate State 100K. Subscribe to the channel. We're almost there, We're that close. Yes, to answer Softball Sal's question, yes, I think coaches will continue to leave college football. As I have played on the show a few times, that Kirby Smart clip the day after the national championship game, very prophetic. Kirby Smart took time that he was given on ESPN, big global platform and 24 hours or less removed from winning a title. Still got confetti in his hair. And what is Kirby Smart taking the time to talk about? Taking the time to talk about the structure and the direction of the sport, doesn't like where it's headed. Good men are leaving the game, college game, uh, because they can't take it anymore. What happened a couple of weeks later? Matt Luke, his offensive line coach, didn't go to the NFL. He didn't go to another college. He just retired. Said, I, I can't take this anymore. He went to be with his family. That's not the end of it. That's just the beginning. Uh, so what is the reason there? Well, workload, disproportionate to what it's ever been in this sport. I know technology has made a lot of the day-to-day -day of a college coach easier, but there's also some stuff, let's just be honest and put it all on the table, that you're dealing with. If you're a defensive backs coach at Oklahoma State today, that the DB's coach at Oklahoma State in 1977 didn't even know existed, much less had to deal with. So there's a whole lot more on your plate. I can guarantee you the DB's coach at Missouri in 1977 was not recruiting four classes simultaneously. Oh, and by the way, re-recruiting his own roster to make sure they don't go out the door. I mean, were they even worried about scouting college talent? No, they didn't have college scouting departments because once you were on campus, you were on campus. They didn't need to worry about the transfer portal. It didn't exist. There's so much more that you have to worry about as an assistant coach. Everyone looks at the salaries and everyone thinks you can just throw a certain dollar figure at someone and it creates 28 hours in their day. You can only do what you can do. I didn't matter if I make you a billionaire. You're capable of what you're capable of and every man's got a breaking point. Everyone's got a breaking point mentally. And once you reach it, you reach it. And some guys are leaving the sport because they know they're getting really close to it. Some guys are like Nick Saban or Kirby Smart. Those guys are robots. This will not be a problem for them. They are wizards. They are witches. They are different. They're not normal people. Uh, most of them, 99.9% .9 even in that world are not like them. And so, yes, I think there is a workload issue that could crop up. I also think there is some folk, there are probably some folks in the coaching profession that can handle the workload that may look at the overall, as they would probably call it, erosion of the bedrock of college football. Maybe there are guys out there, like it's happening in college basketball right now, who look and say, I don't like what this is becoming. I don't like where this is headed. Let me give it a couple more years. You know, maybe, maybe things will get steadied and the ship will get righted, but if it keeps going this direction, I don't need this. Plus, I got options. Maybe I'll go to the pros, which is number three. It used to be that the NFL was a tougher place to work than college. That is not the case anymore. It's not remotely the case anymore. I was talking to someone a couple of days ago who was on a major staff in the SEC uh, within the last 10 years, let's say, and they are in the NFL now. And I asked, not that I didn't already know the answer, but just to validate it, I said, compare what you did at fill in the blank university day to day with what it's like now in the NFL. He said, I will never go back to college. If I don't have to, I'll never go back. I love the relationships with the kids. I love being part of developing guys at those premium points in their lives. But I've got a life. Like, I go home. I, I've got a home life. We, I mean, we, we work harder than an insurance salesman. Yeah, but we've got time to ourselves. I, I did not have that in college. So you got that. Guys with options at the pro level are just going to the pro level. And fourthly, now this is one that I want you to think about that's evolving rapidly. The opportunity on television is unlike it's ever been before. You may have noticed that Tom Brady signed a pretty revolutionary deal with Fox on the NFL side of things recently. Uh, the number one reason it's revolutionary is because he's still playing. And the other reason is because he's going to be paid $37 million a year to sit in a broadcast booth. Did you hear what I said? This is, not, this is not the metric system. Inflation's not that out of control yet. 37 mil, I think 37.5. Don't let me shortchange Thomas. 37.5 million a year. Anyway, there are salaries that are being paid 
to A-level broadcasters. Herb Street is getting uh, 18 or something million a year, I think, from Amazon. Uh, ditto for Troy Aikman. Joe Buck, 15 some odd million a year to go call the games for ESPN. Their Monday night football broadcast booth is over 30 million a year just in the booth. That is prime investment. A lot of you guys don't think it's worth it. I can promise you, if you were to see the minute over minute and quarterlies and audience retention and Q rating, and you had the pocketbook, you would be paying every dime these networks are paying. You don't think it's worth it because you say to yourself, oh, I'm watching football regardless. I never tune in for a broadcaster. I know you don't. I don't either. A lot of other people do. We are the P1s. We're going to be there no matter what. Believe it or not, they can take us for granted. Uh, there are some other folks, casuals maybe even, that are drawn to that sort of thing. So in college, guess what's about to happen? What's about to happen is a lot more of the streaming giants are going to get in the college football game. Also, you've got different franchise products like College Game Day, for example, that you could easily see in the coming years having to make personnel decisions. And you've got coaches that are making $8 million a year right now that could go double their salary for a tenth of the workload, or maybe not even that, probably a 20th of the workload per year that they currently do. They could go talk in a microphone and double their salary and cut their workload by who knows how many fractions. Someone's going to do it, and then about two or three or four of them are going to do it, and all of a sudden you're going to be looking and you're going to be seeing guys who should still be in some of the primes of their careers sitting there talking to you every Saturday. Maybe in a broadcast booth, maybe on college game day, maybe on shows that are yet to even be invented. Maybe I'm doing something with one or two of them. People are talking about it in our world. The reason I'm mentioning this is not just, I'm not just speaking extemporaneously. People are talking about this. So there are some wheels already in motion. There are some efforts already underway. There are some offers, probably verbal in nature, I would categorize them as, already out to some guys that are perceived to be you know, more close to the retirement age than just the I'm out of here age. It's going to happen in college football. I, I hope it'll be entertaining, uh, but it will be a shakeup to the sport. Just happened in basketball, I, I think something like that will happen in college football. Don't want it to happen, but I think it will happen. 